In the Balance View training we're introduced to a radically different way that we can use our mind. Um, and the conventional way of using our mind is to focus in on our thoughts, emotions, sensations, experiences and then to try and make sense of everything based on these ever-changing thoughts, emotions and sensations. And um, a simple term for all of those thoughts, emotions and sensations, because I'm getting bored of saying that every time, is data or point of view. And it's quite helpful to take a look basically at our own lives and then at the world around us and to see what is the result of using our mind in this way that we've been trained to conventionally. What is the result that we see um, in our own lives in terms of the way that we relate to ourselves, the way that we relate to other people, the choices that we make in life? And then we can broaden it out and we can see, well, what do we see around us? What do we see in terms of the way that people are relating to each other? The way that groups within society are relating to each other? The way that countries and nations relate to each other? Is this the kind of world that we want to live in? And um, I know from quite a young age it was really clear to me that this wasn't the kind of world that I wanted to live in. And I could not understand why people couldn't get along. I could not understand why there was warfare, why people were killing each other. It did not make any sense to me as a child. And I have to say it still makes <coughs> no sense to me. And as I grew up I learned all of the ideas about what it means to be human. Um, some of them are concepts but others are ideas that are so ingrained and inbuilt into society that we're not even aware that these are the ideas that we're taking on board. And so one of these ideas is that the way that we need to live our lives is to focus in on our data and use the data as our guide for how we behave and how we act and how we speak in the world. So the way that works is, is that when I have a thought or I have a feeling then I simply act on that. And those thoughts and feelings, certainly in my case, are changing all of the time. Like changing all of the time. So I can think of anybody that I know and I can, spending one day with any one person, it could be an intimate partner, it could be a family member, it could be a work colleague, it could be a friend, it could be somebody you just met on the beach, and during the course of an hour, not even a day, I will have a whole range of thoughts and emotions about that person. And it might be from really liking them, to really not liking them, to agreeing with them, to disagreeing with them, to feeling comfortable with them, to feeling uncomfortable with them. And it's this completely unpredictable display. So what happens when I base my relating on those ever-changing descriptions? It's kind of obvious that the way I relate is going to be really unpredictable. That there's no way there's going to be a stability and a consistent openness in that relating. Because I'm basing the relating on these ever-changing descriptions about what I think and what I feel. So that's the conventional way. So now we're introduced to another way that we can use our mind. And in the Balanced View training, this is a very systematic approach. There are key points along the way that if we follow these key points, the actual nature of mind will become obvious to us in our everyday life. <coughs> and so the first key point is the introduction. We need to know what is the actual nature of mind. What is the fundamental basis of everything that we experience? If you stop thinking for a moment, what remains? There's something about you that is there naturally. There's an alertness, a cognizance, the capacity to know, to know the next thought arising. And it is key that each of us has this recognition, this instinctive recognition. And then it becomes not an idea, but something that we've identified in ourself, the basis of our experience. So that's the first key point, this introduction to what is fundamental about us and our experience. Now another key point is the inseparability of whatever we're thinking, feeling or sensing from this basic state, from our awareness or our open intelligence, as it can also be called. And what that means is that nothing that we can experience, no thought, emotion or sensation, no stream of data, can be found to have a nature separate or apart from the intelligence in which it occurs. Now that, in a way, is quite easy to understand. 
I need to have the capacity to know or to experience, to be able to know or to experience anything. But to have that as an intellectual idea and understanding is great. But that is the starting point. It has to become an instinctive recognition in the direct encounter with our own experience. So, for example, um, if I don't sleep well, if I wake up tired in the morning, if I feel I find myself lying awake at night thinking about not being able to sleep. This is the perfect demonstration of the irony of trying to make sense and trying to act and live in the world based on focusing in on thoughts and emotions. The thing that keeps me up at night, the thing that keeps me from sleeping is the thoughts about worrying about not sleeping. This is insanity, complete insanity. So what do we do? What do we do when we find ourselves lying awake at three o'clock in the night and, oh, it's another night, I'm not sleeping and I won't be able to function in the morning and I, I need to go to sleep? And we go directly to the basis of mind, the basis of those thoughts and those experiences. This same open intelligence that we identified when we stopped thinking is the basis of all of those thoughts. And to go to that basis, we allow the thoughts to be as they are. We stop the train of descriptions and we rest naturally as awareness, as open intelligence. And right there we discover the ease of being that is always accessible regardless of descriptions. And in my own case, when I find myself in that situation, it's so powerful just to lie there and relax. And I can lie there and I can relax. And what I also find really helpful is that when I listen to talks from Candice, I can't sleep so I put on this talk and it just confirms the nature of reality. Then if I fall asleep because I'm so relaxed, which often happens, fantastic. If I don't fall asleep then I get to listen to a talk about the nature of reality, <laughs> completely confirming the nature of reality in my own experience. It's a win-win situation. Then I wake up in the morning and I'm tired and my eyes are grainy and my body feels a bit achy and my thoughts are negative and I'm convinced my thoughts are negative because I didn't sleep and because I didn't eat the right things the day before and <laughs> because of the thing that happened to me when I was 10 years old and just this, this constant description, flow of descriptions. There is no ease of being to be found in following those. To go to the direct perception of the nature of mind in the feeling of tiredness. Tiredness is full of bright, shining, beneficial potency. When I stop describing it and I rest as the basic essence of the feeling of tiredness. Open intelligence is never tired. Open intelligence is inseparable from tiredness. And the difference this makes is that when I give this tiredness an independent nature by having all of these stories about it, I'm making it into something, like some, there's this tiredness and I've got to do something with it. And how do I resolve it? What do I do with it? Actually, you don't need to do anything with it. Allow it to be as it is. It is open intelligence. It's the dynamic energy, the expression of the basic state. And the difference this makes is that when I give it an independent nature, I become a victim to this particular thought, emotional sensation, in that it seems to have power over me. And I will end up being a grumpy, miserable person, trying not to swear, for the rest of the day. <laughs> when I allow it to be as it is, that tiredness has no power over me. Because open intelligence has mastery over all of its own data, its own display. In the same way that um, a mirror has mastery over all of the reflections appearing within it. None of the reflections can affect the pristine purity and openness of a mirror. It doesn't matter whether the reflection is tiredness or anything else. It makes no difference to the mirror. So we go back to the source of each perception maintaining complete perceptual openness for short moments repeated many times. It's like, well, how do I do this? This sounds great, but how do I do it? The how to do it is the balanced view training. And this is the next key point. The practice of short moments of touching in and acknowledging the basic state of our mind is the way that we gain certainty 
that this is always the basis of what we're experiencing. Like always. But we need to test it like a good scientist. Like is that true? Is this awareness, is this open intelligence always the basis and inseparable from whatever I'm experiencing? In the same way that um, the breeze is inseparable from the air. The breeze is the dynamic energy of the air. The data streams are the dynamic energy of open intelligence and inseparable from it. When I allow it to be as it is, then I become an empowered human being and not a being that is at the mercy and behaving as if I'm a victim to everything that's going on. And from there, all options are open. I become clear about the actions I take. I'm no longer afraid of feeling everything that I feel. I'm no longer afraid of feeling a um, sense of aggression or rejection from other people. And we experience everything in our lives. There's no way to hide out from life, have you noticed? I tried, I, really, I went and lived in the mountains for years trying to hide out, and life followed me up there. So what are we going to do? Are we going to run scared, or are we going to face everything as it is? Like getting real with what it means to be human, and the real power that we have to be a force of great benefit in the world. And this might not be in the conventional education that actually we're these incredibly beneficial, powerful beings. But for you to be that to your children, without saying anything, that's the most incredible gift you could ever give them. And we become the demonstration of what's possible. Now, we become these empowered examples of what it really means to be human in a completely normal, down-to-earth, everyday way. How incredible is that?